just after I came to Washington University in 1979, the first lunar meteorite was found, a rock that was blasted off the surface of the moon, landed in Antarctica, and was found, and became the first piece of the moon that we had to study that hadn't been recovered on a space mission. And somewhat remarkably, over the last 30 years, there have been about 75 of these rocks now found in various places around the Earth. And so I try to get my hands on all of them, and I made a, a popular web page about lunar meteorites, and almost immediately people started picking up rocks in their driveway and saying, you know, this looks like just like that rock on your website. Uh, it's a long story after that. <laughs> Most meteorites are pieces of, of, of asteroids. It's only like one in a thousand that come from the moon and another one in a thousand come from Mars, but all the rest are, are pieces of asteroids. There are a lot of people who want to collect pieces of the moon, pieces of Mars, every unusual meteorite. The price of a meteorite depends on how rare the meteorite type is. A lunar meteorite goes for much more than an ordinary chondrite. Another issue is whether there's a good story to go along with it. If you go out in your garden and you find this, <coughs> it might be worth $2 a gram. If that same rock came through your roof, it would be worth $20 a gram. It, it's, it's just the story that goes along with it. Uh, the ones that are observed to fall are usually worth more than the ones that are found. And then if it has a funny shape, like the Sakotalines all have funny shapes, those, those go for more. If there was a hole in this one, it would be worth more than <laughs> if there's no hole. I mean, it's stuff that's just, and as a scientist, I have to chuckle because some of these lunar meteorites to me, oh, that's a really unusual type of lunar meteorite. And they often don't go for any more than the ones that I think, oh, it's just another so-and-so lunar meteorite. Well, this is a good meteorite, and this is a very typical example of what we call an ordinary chondrite. Notice how it's all rounded. As it came through the atmosphere, it broke apart, but just like putting an ice cube in water, the corners and the edges are the first things to soften as it comes through the atmosphere and, and, and ablates away. And this is all fusion crust where it's chipped off, you can see through, and it's almost all meteorites, when you chip them, the fusion crust, it's lighter on the inside. If I had a magnet here, a magnet would probably stick to this because there's iron nickel metal. Some of the things that are commonly mistaken for meteorites, like these chunks of hematite, are the same color on the inside as they are on the outside, and that's, that's a giveaway that it's not, not a meteorite. This particular one has all kinds of holes in it. You just never see holes in the surface of a real, of a real meteorite. And another trick I always tell people is to get a white ceramic tile and turn it over to the unglazed side and try to make a chalk mark on it. And a piece of hematite is going to make a red, a red streak, and a meteorite just isn't going to do that. I mean, another one of the most common kinds of things that people send that are not meteorites but catch people's attention again I, I, are pieces that look like this, which I'm almost certain is a piece of slag, some man-made product. It's glassy. It's the same on the inside as the outside. It shows these flow features and that's real common from something that got poured off a melting pot. They'll pick up a magnet but the, the metal is not finely dispersed. You'll find it as great big blobs of metal in it. And so again, this is something that somebody set me, caught, caught their attention. It's dense. Often people find these things with, with metal detectors, but uh, meteor wrong. Well, these two are both iron meteorites, and this one's been sawn. This is uh, from Argentina. It's a real common meteorite that you can buy pretty cheap on the internet called Campo del Cielo. There's tons of this stuff. This one is kind of one of my favorite. It's one of thousands and thousands of pieces of a iron meteorite known as Sukkot Aline. That's a mountain range in, in Siberia, west far western Siberia. And this is probably the biggest meteorite impact to have happened in historical times. It happened in 1947. And this is what they call Sukkot Aline shrapnel. This wow. thing burst 
and I say millions of pieces just splattered all over the p place, embedded in trees, um, embedded in houses. It's amazing nobody got killed, but there weren't many people who lived there. A fellow I know who got interested in meteorite collection decided to um, do it the right way. He went back to the style of famous meteorite collector Harvey Nininger back in the early part of this cen century. He put advertisements in local newspapers out, out, out in Missouri. He got contacted by somebody a few years ago, went out and take a piece off of it, and I think this is part of the original piece, and it turned out to be not only a meteorite, it's a very rare type of meteorite known as a palisite. Um, this is all pure, pure metal with grains of uh, the mineral olivine peppered in it like a you know, bran bun with <laughs> raisins <laughs> kind, yeah. Kind, yeah. Kind, kind, kind of thing. And uh, this is only the 20th palisite, I believe it is, that's been found in the United States. The whole rock is about the size of a basketball, and this is just a small piece. And so we analyzed the olivine and determined that it was uh, what we call main group palisite and we're not set up well to analyze the metal so I got him in touch with the, the world's expert on analysis of metal in iron meteorites and they determined that uh, this is a what we call a, an anomalous main group palisite <laughs> meaning that it's it's different in detail than any of the others, but it's pretty darn close to what most palisites are like. And so we have a, a bigger, very nice polished section of this down in our museum. This was just part of the original one that we got to analyze, but that, that's kind of fun.